welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Hello, everyone. In our previous videos, we've gone through how to perform a TCID 50 assay and how to analyze it using two different methods. Today, we're going to explore how to convert TCID 50 per milliliter values to estimate the number of infectious virus particles in our sample. First, it's important to understand that the TCID 50 doesn't directly measure the total number of viral particles. As we've discussed in our previous videos, the TCID 50 represents the dilution of a virus that infects 50% of the wells in our assay. This is a measure of viral infectivity rather than a direct count of virus particles. Now let's discuss how to convert TCID 50 values into a more direct count of virus particles, commonly known as infectious units. This conversion will give us a clearer picture of the actual number of particles capable of causing infection in each milliliter of our sample. If we're looking to convert a TCID 50 per milliliter titer into an infectious units per milliliter titer, we simply multiply the TCID 50 per milliliter value by 0.7. In our case, that would be 5.27 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by 0.7. This gives us 3.7 times 10 to the 6 infectious units per milliliter. But why 0.7? This conversion factor is deeply rooted in the probabilities underlying the TCID 50 method. But let's explore this concept further. When we say that about 50% of our cell cultures are infected, we're actually using a model based on the Poisson distribution. This is a key statistical method used to determine how often events occur over a set interval of time or space. Though it might sound complex, the Poisson distribution helps predict seemingly random events, like how often you might hear your favorite song on the radio, or in our case, how a virus spreads across cell cultures. In the context of viral infections, if we examine the probability of a virus infecting a monolayer of cells, the actual number of viruses per cell could follow a Poisson distribution. This means some cells might not get infected at all, while others could end up with multiple viruses. Assuming that the cells are fully permissive to the virus and that infecting one cell doesn't interfere with the infection of another, we use a specific graph to visualize this. Let's take a look. Here, the x-axis represents the average number of viruses per cell, and the y-axis shows the probability of that number of infections happening. The equation on the screen tells us what is the probability of reaching a certain percentage infection starting from a certain number of infectious units. To find the number of infectious units per milliliter when we know the desired infection probability, we rearrange our equation like this. So, when we have calculated our 50% infection rate in the TCID 50 assay, we know that this required 0.7 viruses per cell. So, we can simply say that one TCID 50 per milliliter corresponds to 0.7 infectious units per milliliter. This is a little unintuitive, but we can explain with the help of a very simple example. Suppose we have 100 cells. We might have expected 50 viruses to be enough to achieve a 50% infection rate. But when our equation accounts for the fact that some cells will be infected by more than one virus, this means that some other cells will be missing out and we need more virus to reach the 50% infection rate. In this simple example, 70 viruses are needed to infect 50% of our 100 cells. So we've seen why, when converting TCID 50 per milliliter to infectious units per milliliter, we multiply by 0.7. However, because virus quantification is logarithmic, a factor of 0.7 might align with the experimental error range of our assay, which means this conversion might not always be essential. To put this into perspective, consider these values. We have measurements like 5.27 times 10 to the 6 TCID 50 per milliliter, and after conversion, 3.7 times 10 to the 6 infectious units per milliliter. This difference is not substantial when we speak about viruses. 
However, it's crucial to clearly report whether measurements are in TCID 50 or infectious units. If you'd like a more detailed explanation and to explore the mathematical aspects of this topic, be sure to check out our blog. You can find the link in the video description below. It's a great resource for additional insights and information. And as usual, best of luck with your virus work. If you're passionate about virology and enjoyed this video, don't forget to follow our channel for more straightforward science content.